Good morning, New Life Church. It's a beautiful day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. If we could all stand together this morning for our time of worship. Amen. Let's just welcome the Lord into this place. Lord, we just thank you for this day that you've made that we have to worship you, Lord. We thank you for already being in this place, God. You're worthy of all of our praise, and we just want to lift your name up, God. We put all of our belief in you, God, above every situation that we may be facing, Lord. We just praise your name above all else, God. We pray that you would open our hearts, Lord, open our minds. God, let all of our praise just go forth to you this morning. God, we just want to bless your name. Let us just fill you in this place. In Jesus' name. stand against your might you've always been with us every battle you've already won we've already won do you believe that today oh there is no weapon there is no weapon that has ever left a mark on you and there is no I need to lift my hands. I'm going to praise the Lord today. That's what I've come to do. 
and he will step into your situation and he will make that way. He will part those waters and he will be an overcomer for you. He will be the breakthrough that you need. Let's just say this today. Jeremiah today for your announcements. 
Um, they're really short, but if this is your first time with us at New Life Church, we want to say welcome. We're very happy that you're here. It's great to have you here in the house of the Lord today. And you're not just a visitor, but you will be family very quickly, so <laughs> don't get used to the feeling of being a visitor. So our June prayer newsletter is available today. If you would like to um, read up on some June information and prayer requests, that is available for you out in the vestibule today. We have church camp happening tomorrow. If you're going to church camp, say woo woo. Woo woo. All right. Church camp is tomorrow, June 13th through 17th. Um, very exciting. We have lots of our children and youth going to um, youth camp at Sunday school camp. It's going to be an amazing time. Um, we will still have Wednesday night Bible study here at 7 p.m. on June 15th. I apologize. I'm out of breath. So. <laughs> um, so if we could just have our ushers come to receive our tithe and offering today. And we're just going to pray over the remainder of our service. So, Lord, we thank you for what we already feel in this place. Lord, you are so mighty, God. There is no one like you, Lord. We pray that you would just bless the giver today, God, that you would just bless the remainder of our service, Lord, that you would just be with us. God, in a mighty way, we just believe you to be in this place. Lord, we already feel you so strongly. God, open our hearts and our minds just to receive what you have in this place today already. We've come to praise you this morning. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. There is no one else for me. No one else can say. Cover 
Me, ha. 
just one more time without the music. Let's sing how great. How great is our God. Sing with me. Let's just continue to lift his name up today. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Amen. 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 Jesus, we thank you. We love you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. Amen. I think it'd be good if we put a hand in the air one more time. Just entertain the presence of the Lord here today. Amen. Lord Jesus, you're great. You're great. You're mighty. You're high. You're lifted up. Your train fills the temple. You're an awesome Savior to us. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise your name today. We lift the name of Jesus higher and higher and higher. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 I'm, I'm directing your attention this morning to John chapter 8, and um, it'll be on the screen, or you can look it up, John 8, verse 10, whatever. Um, and I'm reading verses 10 and 11, and um, out of that passage of Scripture, and then I'm going to read verse 32, even though that won't be on the, on the slide it just says these words, when Jesus had raised himself up and he saw no one but the woman, he said to her, woman, where are your accusers or where are the accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. And then in verse 32 of that same chapter, it says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And, um, and I, I want to take a little time and just talk about new life today. New life. Just say the words new life. New life. Um, this woman was given something that all of us need, regardless of where we're coming from, regardless of whether we've never come to this church or we've been in this church for a long time. This woman was given something wonderful, and that was another chance. That was a new opportunity. That was a fresh start. How many of you know we need a fresh start? We need a new day. We need a new chance. So let's pray. Lord, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for, God, the way in which you approach our life. Lord, the scripture says that your mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. God, we know, Lord Jesus, that every day when the sun comes up in the morning, Lord, it's a new chance. It's a new opportunity. It's a new day. It's a new thing. And there's new life, Lord God, for your people, Lord, that we're made new in Christ Jesus. And I praise you for it. I thank you, Lord, for that identity. I thank you for knowing who I am in you. I praise you for it today. I pray it help us through the power of your word today and the power of your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Just say in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You probably know um, that when we chose a name for our church, 
we chose the name New Life um, for our local assembly. And there's a reason we chose that name. Um, I believe we stand to offer hope in this community. In Ames, we offer hope for new life. Um, and, and yet, you could say a number of things about our church. In other words, you could say, um, when you look at the Bible, I always tell people when we're teaching Bible studies or when I'm preaching, um, the book of Acts is the example of a church in our world. So you could say, well, we're a book of Acts church. Um, you could say, because of the Pentecostal experience, we believe in the same experience that people received on the day of Pentecost. So you could say, well, then we're a Pentecostal church. Uh, you could say, because we preach what the apostles preached. In other words, we'll preach the same message Peter preached. Or we'll preach the same message that Paul preached when you read through the book of Acts. So you could say, well, then we're an apostolic church. Because we're preaching what the apostles preached. And we're saying uh, what the apostles said um, and you could say a lot of things that were Pentecost by experience or were the message that were preached is an apostolic message. You could say a lot of things about that. Um, and, and maybe some people would understand what that means. But yet, what I would say is to the person that knows very little about God or the person that maybe they're an agnostic or the person that maybe they're wondering is there even a God out there? Or the person that maybe they're a Buddhist or they're a Muslim uh, and they're, they're, they maybe know very little about Christianity at all. Um, you could say we're representing an opportunity. We're representing an experience, you could say, to rise above. We represent hope that's beyond the average life that is lived in this world. Um, we, we represent something where you can rise above the brokenness, you could say, of, and the problems that are around us and the struggles that are in the curses of this world. And you can rise above that and you can live a new life in Jesus Christ. There's new life for you. So... The church, it, it stands for salvation. It stands for deliverance. But really the major message is there is opportunity for a new beginning for broken people. You could say that are coming from this world. But even greater than that for broken people that are living in the challenges that they're facing. Maybe they're trying to recover from an addiction. Maybe they're trying to break through from an old lifestyle. Maybe they're trying to rise above some place of an old area in their life. Uh, and, and they're struggling with that. Uh, it doesn't mean that God ignores our sin in the old life. But it does mean that God has the ability somehow to, to challenge those places to deliver us from those places, to help us to rise above, to help us to move on into a new chapter and into a new day. It is a message that says it doesn't have to always be as it has always been. There literally is a breakthrough place that you can find in Jesus Christ. And he who the Son makes free is free indeed. He does not just come to break some chains in your life, but he literally can break every chain. This is, this is the message, you could say, of new life. And it's the message, really, of Jesus Christ. And so, so it's not like you come to church and you say, well, okay, I'm in bondage, but I still feel, but at least I feel better about it. Um, that's, not what, that's not what new life is about. New life is about dealing with some issue and, and finding a breakthrough to get above it and live beyond it, you could say, in this world and in your life. And so, so it's, it's more than just always being in a state, you could say, of challenge and recovery, but it's literally getting beyond those places and learning how to rise above it.
How many of you know we need balance in our life? We need balance in every area of our life. How many of you know we struggle to maintain balance in our life? The scripture says things like this. It, it basically says that sometimes the cares of this world can choke out the things of the Lord. Um, and it's, it's not saying that there are things you should not care about. It's not saying that there's things you shouldn't be concerned about. Uh, in other words, you need a job. You need to work your job. If you don't work your job, it's hard to get money to make a living. I mean, I think you all know that, right? It's a challenge to get through life. Life is not easy. Life is a challenge. There's certain things you have to take care of if, if you're going to make it through this life. Um, and so he's not saying you shouldn't care about things in this world. What he's saying is sometimes you can get out of balance and sometimes you should care too much about some of the things you shouldn't maybe not care as much about. In other words, you can't get out of this world some things that you want to get out of this world world. You're never going to get the fulfillment out of some of the things you think you're going to get the fulfillment out of in this world. I'll never forget the first new to me car that I purchased. I say that because I've never purchased a brand new car, but it was new to me and it smelled new. It even felt new. Until, of course, you take it to Walmart or Target or whatever, and you walk out and you see that nice, I mean, that person that parked just a little bit too close to you on the edge of the line. You know what I'm talking about? How many of you hate parking in parking spots where the person is parked right on the line? And you try to squeeze out of there, or you're trying to crawl out the window or whatever, and you park in that spot, and you know, right, when you park there, you're thinking, this person is going to leave a big door ding on my car. And you come out, and there it is. And that car you thought was so nice, there's your door ding right there in the middle of it all. I'm way off my notes now, but it's fun anyway. So you could say, in this life that we're living, some things you want to get out of this life you don't always get out of this life. Why am I saying that? We don't know why this woman fell into this place. We don't know why she went through what she went through. It could have been something that happened 20 years ago. It could have been happened, something that happened 30 years ago. Maybe her father was abusive to her. We don't know. Maybe she suffered in abusive situations. We don't know. Maybe she ran out of money and gave herself to prostitution. And that's how she was making her money. We don't know. All we know about the situation and the scenario is they were trying to make a fool out of Jesus Christ. They were trying to paint him into a corner because they brought to him a woman that was taken in the act of adultery, but they did not bring the man, which means it probably was a setup. They were they took advantage of her somehow. They found her in a vulnerable place. They took advantage of her in a place where she maybe was out of balance in her life. And I don't know why she gave into what she gave into. I don't know why they could talk her into what they talked her into. I don't know why she found herself in that place. I don't know why she was involved in that immoral activity but what we know is that's where she was and they brought her in front of Jesus Christ and they put her on the dirt you could say in the temple and they said now listen Moses and his law says that she should lose her life Moses and the law says that she should be condemned this woman is taken in the act of adultery and she according to God's law should no longer be alive and what do you say we should do with her Jesus And of course, they tried to trap him. They tried to get him to the place. Because no matter what he said, he was in trouble. If he would say, well, yes, 
we should, we should stone her. Well, then they'd say, they'd run to Pilate and they'd say, okay, we've got this guy that's creating problems and he's thinking he's more powerful than Rome and we need to get rid of him because they were trapping him. How many of you know the devil is playing games and you and I are caught in the middle of the games that he's playing? How many of you know there's an enemy that's out to destroy you and he's got a plan and he has a plot and his plot and his plan, he's planned death for you, death for me, destruction for everything around us. He does not want you to be victorious. He does not want you to live free. He does not want you to break free from every shackle and every tie and every chain. He wants you to live your life in bondage and he wants to take advantage of the webs that he weaves. And this woman was caught in that place, you could say. She was caught in that struggle. She was caught up in that area of her life. Amen. Thank the Lord that there is new life in Jesus Christ. And Jesus lifted himself up as he was dealing with that issue. And he looked at the accusers and he said, All right, whoever is without sin... Let's let them throw the first stone at her. Whoever it is here that doesn't have any sin in their life, well then go ahead, you throw the stone at the person. You tell them why it is that they should be condemned. You are the one that should stand up and say that. And Jesus knew he was the only sinless man in that entire situation. And she was sitting there on the ground. And finally she looked up at the Lord after everyone else was gone. And Jesus said, where are your accusers? Where are those that condemn you? Where are the ones that are really trying to take you out? Where is this one that set the strategy to entrap you? And she said, well, they used to be all around me until I came to you. And she said, but now there's no one left. I don't see anyone, Lord. Amen. Here's what I came to tell you today. I believe with all of my heart, it takes God's Spirit working in your life to put balance in areas in your life where you need to have balance so you're not trying to get things out of this world that you will never get out of this world. This world will never satisfy your soul. You're never going to find a relationship in this world that will satisfy your soul. You're never going to make enough money in this world to satisfy your soul. You're never going to get to this place in this world where you'll say, Finally, I've got it. Finally, I've found it. Finally, I've got everything that I need. And as long as you're chasing after those things, you're vulnerable. You're vulnerable to the enemy. But if you get in the face of the Lord, if you say, I want to seek you first and your kingdom, if you say, I want a relationship with you that satisfies me so that I'm not out there love starved, so that I can't get picked off by the enemy, so that something can't come along and entrap me and put me down into this place. If I am free indeed, if I know the truth, the truth can make me free. Free. And Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. I'm not here to condemn you. I'm here to give you new life. I'm not here to put you down further. I'm here to pick you up. I'm not here to tell you how far off the mark you are. I'm here to tell you that you can live new inside of me and in my presence. Neither do I condemn you, but you are going to go and you are going to rise above 
of it and you are going to sin no more. My words are going to find you where you are. My words are going to fix you and repair you. My words are going to lift you above. My words are going to create a new sense of life inside of you. My words will give you a new identity and help you to understand who you are inside of me. And the next time this temptation comes knocking, you're going to look at them in the eye and you're going to say, but I'm already loved. I'm already forgiven. I'm already an overcomer. I've already risen above it. I live in a new place. I have a new identity and I know who I am in God. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord. Glory, I'm going to tell on you. I see you sitting out there, so I'll just use you as my example. Glory used to come to me and she used to say, you're looking in my window because you're preaching to me. That's as much as I'll tell glory. And then I'll leave the rest alone. How many of you know God's word can find you where you're living? How many of you know you can fool people, but you can't fool God? The Bible says God's word is quick and powerful and sharp. I'm just warning you, God's word will find you. I'll give you another warning. God's word will follow you home. Don't worry. The preacher won't follow you home. Don't worry. I'm not looking in your window. Don't worry. I'm not trying to change anything about you. I promise I'm not. I am not the gospel police. That is not my job. But God's word is powerful. God's word knows where you are. It's quick, it's powerful, it's sharper than a two-edged sword. It's like a surgeon's scalpel. It's going to get down inside of you, and it's going to deal with the places where you are out of balance in your life. It's going to find that area where maybe you're too connected to the cares of this world, where maybe you've got an issue with greed. How, how many of you know you've got an issue with greed? It's hard to give. It's hard to open up your hand and give anything. <laughs> Amen. But God can deal with that problem inside of you. I heard about one missionary. She said she was praying and God finally told her, you've got to start giving. And she said, but God, I just can't help it. I, I want to hold on to everything I have. He said, well, you need to get a bunch of a handful of quarters every day. And when you walk by the school where the kids are playing, I want you to throw quarters over the fence at the kids while they're playing and learn how to be a giver. I'm just telling you how God worked on one lady until she learned how to be a giver. And when, when she learned how to be the giver, then God called called her to missions and God said all right if you can hurt open up your hand and throw a fistful of quarters over the fence at a bunch of kids then I can use you somewhere else to do something great for my kingdom I can break not some chains but I can break every chain of addiction in your life I can help you to rise above and be an overcomer that's what God can do that's what he wants to do in our life, and in our spirit, and in our world. Amen. 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 God's word not only has the ability to read your mind and know where you're living, but it has the ability to determine why you think the way you think. It knows your motive. Have you ever tried to psychoanalyze? Well, I shouldn't ask that question. Have you ever tried to psychoanalyze yourself? Try to figure out why do I do what I do? Why do I react the way I react? Why do I respond the way I respond? How many of you would like to change in some area of your life? Amen. Both of my hands and both of my feet are up. I'll tell you one area I'd like to change right now. I still think I should lose about 20 pounds, but anyways. There's some areas we need to change. But Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. You're going to go. You're going to sin no more. There was a lady 
who was at a traffic light. She had several children in her car, and her motor quit. The guy behind her had road rage building up inside of him. <laughs> and he just pulled up close behind her and just laid on his horn. Wow. And finally, the woman got out of the car. And with tears streaming down her face, she walked back to the man and she said, Sir, why don't you let me blow your horn while you try to crank my car? <laughs> Anybody can condemn the world that is around us. Anyone can look at someone else's life and speak condemnation into their life. Amen. Thank the Lord. But Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. I'm going to speak words of life. I'm going to speak words of hope. I'm going to speak words of deliverance. I'm going to speak words that have the ability to tell you what you're thinking that's wrong and why you're thinking the wrong thing. And more than that, I'm going to speak words that not only can see where you're living, but it can show you how you can live different. I'm going to speak words that empower you to rise above. I'm going to speak words not that sit behind you and blow the horn, but get under the hood and fix it so that thing can drive again. I'm not here to blow the horn. I'm here to get your car to work so your car can move forward and things can move on in your life. I am here for the purpose of giving new life. Amen. I've got a word that can transcend a death sentence that has been spoken over your life. I've got a word that can transcend the death sentence that's been spoken over everything that God has given to you that is good in your life. There is new life in Jesus Christ. It will live and it shall not die. It will rise and it will walk again. Neither do I I condemn you, you will be able to go and sin no more. I will put up in front of you a mirror of truth. I'll show you what it really looks like to live for me, and I'll show you things as you are right now, and I'll help you to change the picture to the place where you are living as an overcomer. I'm not bringing you out of Egypt so you can leave Egypt in the wilderness somewhere. I'm bringing you out of Egypt so you can get into a land of promise and you can learn what it is to live a full life where you're truly an overcomer and you get things in balance and you learn how to live righteously and godly in this present world and you learn how to be an overcomer in Jesus Christ that's where I'm taking you I want you to see the picture just say the word new life new life Amen. So you could drive by and you could say, oh, that's a Pentecost church. That's an Apostolic church. That's this, that's that, that's whatever. You know what our message is to this world? There is new life in Jesus Christ. We're not here blowing the horn at everybody that drives by saying you're wrong. We're here blowing the horn saying you can get set free. And the one, the son, if he sets you free, you can be so free. You can be so free. You can be so free. You can break every chain. You can break every addiction. You can break every bondage. You can walk free of all of those things that tie you down. You can rise above it in Jesus Christ. Amen. Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Thank the Lord. God put Ezekiel in a valley full of dry bones. And then he asked him a question. He said, can the bones live? And Ezekiel evaded the question because he said, well, God, you know. <laughs> in other words, it does not look good from my perspective. I don't really think from the way I look at it, there's a lot of hope. But God said, can the bones live? It'd be like looking at the person 
on your block that you think is the worst sinner of, above all other sinners? <laughs> I won't tell you why you think that, but... And, and I would come to church on a Sunday morning and say, could that person experience new life? And you would say, well, only God knows. I mean, I don't really think they can, but maybe, maybe God knows they can. And the Lord said, I want you to speak to the bones. And I want you to tell the bones, you're going to hear the word of the Lord. And I want you to tell the bones, you're not going to remain dead, but you're going to come back together again. I want you to tell the bones that you're going to get up and you're going to connect. Even, even though you look like you're dry, even though you've laid in that valley for a long time, even though the sun has been shining down you for a, on, on you for a long time, even though you feel deadness all over you, you're going to live. He said, preach it to the bones. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever walked into a dark church at night. I remember I was praying in a church one time, and it was dark. It was late at night. And there was a problem in the electrical system, and as, as I was praying, one of the lights, as God is my witness, came on, on like the platform area. At first, I thought, well, maybe God is calling me to be a preacher or something, you know, it just shines on the pulpit. Really, it was just a problem with the electrical system. But, but I remember that feeling. It was kind of scary. It was creaky. It was weird. And God puts Ezekiel in the middle of this valley full of dry bones. And as he's preaching in this vision, these bones are flying past him. <laughs> I'm trying to get the picture out to you. Bones. Oh, went someone's shoulder. He's dodging bones. All these bones are coming together. And they stand up together. But there's no life in them at all. They're there. But there's no life in them. Physically, their bodies are there now. But there's no life in the body because... When the bones came together, he preached skin onto them. <laughs> so they looked better than just bones. But God said, all right, Ezekiel, preach to the wind and say, oh, wind, breathe on these that they might live. Preach to the wind that there can be new life that comes into them. Because if all they experience is God's word and a couple little things getting put back together and then they just walk out the door and, but they're still a walking wounded or the, the, the walking dead or they're, they're there and they have this, some semblance that God knows where they're at and God knows what's going on. But the full work is not done. They'll never be the exceeding great army that I've called them to be. Oh, Jesus, help us. Amen. They'll never take over the territory that I've called them to take over. They'll never become the people that I've called them to be. So preach new life to them. Preach breath into their spirit. Preach breath into their minds and into their hearts. Preach, 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 preach until, until the wind from heaven blows over them and they stand up as an exceeding great army and they start to enter into the place where there's balance and connection to the Lord and, and there's an overcoming consecration in their life where they love the Lord so much that there's transformation, that that awful spirit they used to have is transformed and now suddenly instead of hating they love and instead of putting down they're lifting up and instead of instead of fighting bitterness with bitterness they're an overcomer in every area of their life suddenly there's new life inside of them preach until the spirit falls like that Ezekiel tell the people there's new life for them don't just put it on your church sign and then walk away and expect somebody to understand it. Preach it to them. Preach it, preach it, preach it, preach it, preach it. Amen. And I'm, 
try not to scream it, but I, I feel it in my soul. There's new life. There's new life. Don't look at it just when Jesus started talking to it, but look at it down the road a little ways. Amen. We do a little exercise when we do Bible studies. We go through Genesis chapter 1 and about 10 times, 12 times, 15 times over and over again, it just says, and God said, 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 and God said. God came into a world that was just full of darkness, and God said there's going to be light. Don't look at it right now. But if God can still speak to it down the road somewhere, I mean, there's going to be butterflies flying around. There's going to be trees. There's going to be some beautiful things. God's going to breathe on it. God's going to breathe on it. Stand with me if you would today. So here's my warning to you, Gloria. It's going to follow you home. It's going to follow you home. It's not just that God knows where you're living. It's that God knows why you're thinking the way you're thinking. It's going to follow you home. God's going to breathe on it. He's going to breathe on it going to breathe on it. Brother Mike came up to me today. I was coming in. He reached out. He shook my hand. He said, I'm, I'm done just saying brother or sister. He said, I'm going to start saying hello, fellow overcomer. Now listen to me. You might say, oh, pastor's preaching to the worst of all sinners today. I mean, he's preaching to all the people that are taken in the act of adultery. So at least that's not me, right? <laughs> Well, maybe it is. If it is, there's grace for you. Thank God there's overcoming for you. But no, I'm not just preaching to people that were involved in adultery. I'm preaching to everyone here today. You need new life in Jesus Christ. You need that. Every now and then I say the difference between the people in the pews and the people on the platform is the direction they're facing. I need new life in Jesus Christ. I need that. I need to hear him say, I'm not here to condemn you, but you're going to rise above this. You're going to be able to walk in such a way that you're balanced. That you're able to walk away from temptation. That you're not sucked into the web of the enemy. I'm going to breathe on you for that purpose. Amen. Amen. So the one thing I know about my message today is it's an equal opportunity message. It's for everyone in this building. It's for you. Just take your finger and point at yourself and just say, this is for me. This is for me. I need that life in Jesus. I need that, Jesus. If I don't have that, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches will choke out the effects of God's word and God's work. If I don't have that new life, I'll fall into the same place where I'm used by the enemy over and over and over again. I need that new life. I need to hear that voice. I need to be under the influence of that breath of God's Spirit. I need that. So I'm going to pray a prayer. Amen. And if God's talking to you, I want you to come. Amen. Jesus, in your name. Lord, you're here, you're working, you're speaking to someone's heart. And even while I'm speaking these words, the enemy's wrestling with someone. But God, you're the one, Lord. Greater is he that's in us than he that is in this world. You're the one that's calling and drawing and working. 
So I pray, Lord, I pray that your word would have its perfect work. I pray it would shepherd us towards that new life. I pray, Lord, just like that woman in Acts 8 had that experience with you, that there would be an experience just like that in this place today for someone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Now listen, I want to make this very simple. If you feel like God is talking to you about some area of your life where you might have a struggle or a challenge, but the Lord is telling you today, as I was speaking, there's new life for you in that area of your life. You believe that? I want you to come and just stand across the front of this church. If you believe that, I want you to come. Just stand up here. Amen. Amen. You believe God's talking to you. I want you to come. Just stand up here. Amen. Amen. All right. We're going to pray one more time and then we'll ask the Lord. Amen. For those of you that are here and those of you that are up here in the front, we're going to pray a special prayer. Jesus, in your name, God, I just pray, Lord, there's places, God, where we need life. Lord, and we just simply ask you, God, to breathe on us in a fresh way. Speak words of life over us in that area of life, Lord, that it maybe looks very dead. Or maybe there's a death sentence that's already pronounced by the enemy in that area of our life. But God, you're faithful. You're able. You're not here to condemn us. You're here to find a way. You're here to make a way. And we speak life to it today. And we're believing you, Lord Jesus, in those areas of our life. Maybe it's a place of imbalance that you need to balance out. Maybe it's a, an addiction where we need true deliverance. Maybe it's a way of thinking, Lord God, and we need a different way of thinking. But Lord, we know there's new life in you. And we know if we can hear from you today that we can go and we can rise above it. That's what we need from you. So I pray through the power of your spirit, let there be, Lord Jesus, wisdom and revelation that flows. Turn the light on in our spirit and speak it to us today. In the name of Jesus, I pray. In Jesus' name, I pray. In Jesus' name, I pray. In the name of the Lord, I pray. Now listen, amen. If you're here today, amen. Maybe you're out there in your pew. If you would come in behind and let's pray let's pray for one another for just a little while today reach your hand to your neighbor and let's pray just pray for someone find someone to pray with we'll ask the lord to do this work today and we'll thank him for what he's doing amen yes lord yes jesus yes jesus
no shadow that has ever overcome your life. There is no rival that could ever stand against your life. You've always been with us. Every battle you've already won, we've already won. There is no weapon that has ever left a mark on you, and there is no army with the power conquer truth you've always been with us every battle you've already won we've 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 already won every battle pray together. Jesus, we love you. We thank you for your presence that's here. Thank you for meeting with us. Thank you for caring for us. Thank you, Lord God, for loving us, Lord, like none other, Lord Jesus, in a way that there's no condemnation. But God, there's grace extended. There's the ability to rise above. I pray you'd go with us, Lord God. Send your word with us, Lord Jesus, as we move forward. Breathe on us, direct us, direct our lives, Lord God. Just like you directed the ark of Noah, Lord, through all sorts of challenging places, but the breath of your spirit moved it till it found a resting place. Breathe on us throughout this week and order our steps and direct our vessel, Lord God. Bring us to a resting place. We'll give you praise for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Bring us to a new world. Bring us to a new place in you. We give you praise in it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Just say in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise before we go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Well, greet someone on the way out the door. Smile at them. Tell them they look good in church. In Jesus' name. Amen.